The Marina Del Rey Hospital HealthCast, featuring the doctors of Marina Del Rey Hospital. All right, Dr. Watkins, let's first head out to Mark. He's got a question for you about a back problem. Mark, go ahead. You're on with Dr. Watkins. Thanks. Uh, this is Mark. Um, I'm actually calling on behalf of my brother, Todd. He spent over 20 years in the military, was an airborne soldier, and he had surgery on his back about 10 years ago based on what we thought at the time, compression type of, I guess, repetitive compressions from landings. I was just curious, because he's starting to have problems again, pain in his lower back, and it's radiating down his legs. Is this something that reoccurs? And what is your thoughts on that? That's a great question, Mark, and I get that question a lot from patients. Uh, there's a common perception out there that if you have back surgery, then you'll have to have another one and another one. And a lot of friends and families of my patients tell them never have back surgery because you'll just need another one and, and a second, third, and fourth. And that certainly does happen at times. One of the most difficult parts about the spine is that we have so many movable parts in the spine. There's each disc, you know, there's five lumbar discs, and then there's 12 thoracic discs and seven cervical discs. There's so many discs and so many movable parts with facet joints behind the disc. And so all of those can develop arthritis and degeneration and tears and pathology to it. And that's why the spine is so complex and so much different than like a knee or a hip. You know, if you get arthritis in your knee, well, you get your knee replaced and that's the end of it. But with the spine, there's multiple joints and movable parts right beside each other with nerves coming out. So, yes, it's true that a lot of patients after you've had a surgery, especially like a fusion, if we do a fusion where we stabilize the spine with screws and rods and literally fuse the two bones together, it will treat that disc and that motion segment. So say you have a painful disc or an unstable disc, if we fuse it, which stops the motion across the disc, it'll treat the pain and the pathology from that disc. The problem is if it stops the motion there, it can put more stress on the discs above and below it, which then in 5, 10, 20 years, the natural degeneration and wear and tear can be accelerated due to the increased stress, and then it can degenerate, and then it can be a problem. And so certainly it, with backs and, and spines, it's, you're never at the end point. There's never, oh, get it fixed, and you're done, and you move on. There's always a potential that the problem can recur or develop a problem at another level. A great example of that, Dr. Watkins, is Steve Nash of the Los Angeles Lakers. Here's here's a world-class athlete who is continually having back problems. He is getting older in age and has a lot of mileage as far as being an athlete in the NBA and up and down the court. But here's a guy who continues to deal with back problems. Yeah, back problems typically uh, just don't go away on their own. And... Um, but doing a uh, trunk stabilization program where you get your core muscle strong and really protect that segment, the, if you can get your muscle strong to stop some of the abnormal motion and decrease some of the stress on that disc, it's the same thing that the fusion surgery does. But if you can do it with your muscles, you don't need the fusion. And that's the priority in, in all of our patients is can we treat them non-operatively, work on their muscles, get those as tuned as possible, make them into a fine-tuned machine with their muscles, and avoid needing a fusion. But back to your question about uh, will your uh, brother need potentially another surgery, the biggest, it goes back to the number one, my number one job as a spine surgeon, as a spine doctor, is to diagnose what's the source of the pain. Is the pain coming from a level that can be treated effectively with the surgery? Is it best non-operatively? And helping patients decide what's the best treatment for them. For their individual life, where's their pain coming from, and what are their goals and objectives in their lives is my number one job. And it's probably the thing that gives me the greatest satisfaction is that it's not a cookie-cutter industry. Everybody's different. And if I treat everybody the same, I'm not going to get good outcomes. I really need to understand the person, where their pain's coming from, how it affects their life, and what's best for them, and what do they want out of life to be able to effectively treat them. And so that's one of the reasons why I really love my job, because it's not just fixing broken bones you got to know the person, and you got to treat the person. And it makes it uh, very rewarding when you come out on the other end and you see somebody who is in so much pain come out on the other end, and they're just so grateful that they're able to get back to their life. Mark, thanks for, <clears throat> excuse me. Mark, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Dr. Watkins, you're talking about that passion. I can see the passion that you have for helping people out and just talking about the different ways to help people as far as the back and spine. This is something that runs in the family, doesn't it? Your dad also a world-known uh, surgeon as well. 
Yeah, that's really true. I've learned so much from my dad. It's funny when I was a kid. I have two boys now, six and eight year old, Bobby and Tommy. And, uh, you know, I certainly think about what are they going to do when they grow up. And uh, they got to be doctors. Yeah. Exactly. Got to be surgeons. They assume that if you're an adult, you have to be a doctor. That's what all they know. If you're a walk you're a surgeon. That's what everybody does. The, uh, and uh, growing up, I never really thought about being a doctor. It wasn't until I was older that I really saw what my dad, my dad's job and saw what a great opportunity it is to be able to learn a skill. You know, you go through years of training. I've been a doctor for 20, 25 years now. And you go through 10 to 15 years of training to learn a skill that then you can apply to people and really help people get back to their life. And ultimately, the gratitude that people show me, the patients coming back and bringing me a pot of flowers or some cookies or just genuinely saying thank you is is such a great, rewarding experience that I certainly would love for my kids to be able to experience some of that as well. Uh, the whether it by being a doctor or I, I wouldn't mind them being a professional baseball pitcher, left-handed middle reliever, or uh, another niche uh, field would certainly be great. The Marina Del Rey Hospital HealthCast featuring the doctors of Marina Del Rey Hospital. For more information on any of the topics discussed, please call the Marina Del Rey Hospital helpline at 855-51-SPINE or go to marinahospital.com.